Today on Q&A Mondays, we're talking about pipe boots, why we promote EPDM, and what that looks like for your metal roofing system. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel and welcome to Q&A Mondays. Make sure to check out in the description, we got all the questions we're gonna be talking about today. And today we're talking about pipe boots, roof penetrations, what that kind of looks like for your metal roof, um, what we promote as a manufacturer, what does Sheffield Metals promote. So we've gotten a lot of comments about this because um, you, you've seen uh, pipe boots on the channel before. We've talked about them a little bit. Um, we've gotten comments asking why we would promote something like an EPDM pipe boot um, for a metal roofing system. First of all, I've got Adam and Jeff here on the show today. Tell me what these are, how they're installed, and kind of you know why we would promote th promote them. Sure. So there's a number of types of pipe boots, number of different ways to flash a pipe. Really, today we want to discuss how we're using EPDM and silicon type pipe boots. So um, what we have here is a retrofit uh, EPDM pipe boot. Uh, this is this is for situations where you're going to install over a pipe uh, where you can't really fit it over the pipe, and you got to figure out a way to get around it. Um, really, more specialty type situations, you're really going to want to focus on trying to uh, get in situations where it fits right over. However, that's not always the case. Um, and both of these are uh, your typical deck tight pipe boot. So this one's EPDM uh, and this one's a high temp one. So this one, you know, if there's a roof line temperature of up to, you know, 390, 92 degrees, um, you're going to want to go with something like this. Um, and then for standard installations, you're typically going to use a gray uh, or a colored EPDM type pipe boot. Okay. So Jeff, can you tell me a little bit about how long a pipe boot would last on a typical roofing system? Yeah, well, the, the rotor-based EPDM pipe boots, um, they're guaranteed or they're warranted by the manufacturer, uh, deck type specifically, for uh, 20 years. So that goes in line with most of our common weather type warranty lengths. You know, most of the warranties that we see, uh, people are requesting a 20 year weather type warranty. So we have a product that's also warranted that goes in line with the system for 20 years as well. Right. So tell me a little bit about some other ways that you've seen um, round flashings uh, manufactured or used throughout different metal roofing systems. Um, I mean, honestly, to me, the most common way to do it is using a pipe boot. Sometimes there's, you know, installation contractors out there that want the whole roof to match the same color, everything. So having a, you know, a green roof or, um, you know, a, a burgundy roof, and then all of a sudden you have a gray pipe boot coming out, they don't want that look. Um, so they'll take and they'll, they'll flash the pipe boot with metal, um, depending on how thick the metal is probably will help determine how easy it is to flash because now you're going round, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of curves, things like that. Um, I've seen it where they wrap the pipe itself um, and they have the metal going down into the top of the pipe. Um, but that's a lot more of a custom installation and, you know, it takes a lot of craftsmanship to be able to do that. So uh, the most typical pipe boot installation that, or the most typical pipe penetration installation I see is with a, uh, EPDM pipe boot or a high temp pipe boot, if that's the case. Um, you know, as Adam alluded to earlier with the retrofit pipe boot, um, sometimes there's no way to go over a pipe, and that's where the retrofit pipe boot comes in because you can go around the pipe. Uh, we've done several projects where they've had electrical coming in from a power line going into a conduit through the roof. So instead of having to take and get the power company out there, turn off the power, disconnect the lines, everything else, you can take and you can put a retrofit pipe boot around it and, and move on with the installation. Yeah, and I've seen it at, you know, with smokestacks where you get like a four inch pipe and I shouldn't say smokestack, but something with like a filter or a cap on it where it's wider than the opening that's going on the pipe boot. Right. Probably the most important thing to remember with a retrofit pipe boot is that when you put it on, you want the zipper facing downward of the slope. So that way, you know, it's, you're not fucking water with the open of the pipe boot. Gotcha. Um, you know, facing towards the ridge, you want to face towards the east. Yeah, it makes sense. So, why does Sheffield Metals promote using pipe boots? Honestly, it's the easiest way to flush a pipe. I mean, flat out, it is the easiest way to flush a pipe. 
Um, more installation contractors know how it's installed. You start coming up with a more labor intensive, more creative detail um, that you might have to, you know, have training on and things like that. It's a lot harder to mess up a simple pipe boot installation than it is to ask our contractors to go through um, an intensive labor process or something that's not, you know, typically done in the industry. It's not fair of us to ask them that when there's easier ways to do it. And with a 20 year deck tight warranty, you know, from the manufacturer, um, you know, it goes hand in hand with the warranties that we offer. So when we're talking pipe boots, how would you go about installing one of these? Sure. Well, we kind of look at it as there's two standard uh, installations for pipe boots. Um, not always can you lay the roof out where the pipe's going to fall in the middle of the panel. Sometimes it's going to fall uh, on a seam. So you know, I'll run through how you're going to install it in the middle, in the flat of a panel sometimes. So um, essentially, you know, we recommend 3 16 by 7 8 butyl tape going, you know, on the bottom side of this. Um, then you're placing it over the, the pipe boot. You're cutting the top of this if you have to to, the, to fit the opening. You know, the nice thing about the pipe boots is you can see the measurement of the pipe where you got to cut it to make this fit on there. It has it both in uh, imperial and in metric on both sides okay. of it. So uh, that's a nice advantage, nice, nice perk of this product. And then, you know, you're going to make sure when you're fastening it that you're fastening it to the metal panel, not to the roof system. So you're going to use your typical gasket head fastener. Um, you're going to space it two inches on center. So that's going to create compression between the beetle tape and the metal. So that's going to create a good seal, you know, should keep water from getting in. You know, once you're there, you're going to take a stainless steel uh, band and fit it on over the top, zip it so the pipe boot doesn't compress, so it doesn't slide down the pipe boot any farther. And then you're going to seal above that as well. So you said you want to fasten to the metal panel and not the roof system. What does that mean? Basically, when you cut your hole out for the pipe, you cut it out a little bit bigger. So if you fasten the metal, uh, if you fasten the pipe boot down through the metal into the deck, now you've essentially pinned that panel. So if you cut the hole out big enough and where you can fasten the pipe boot to the metal panel, now as the roof expands and contracts, it's not going to cause any oil cannon and the whole panel is going to be able to move freely in the system and you won't get any distortion, hopefully. Yeah, and, and panels that expand and contract, you know, over enough time, oftentimes you'll have fastener pull out or they'll they'll right. withdraw from the, the panel just because you're getting that pressure from it and it forces it out. Okay. So you're talking about the the actual hole in the deck, not the not this hole. Right. So if you got a if you got a two inch pipe and you, the base of your pipe boot is four inches, you're probably gonna be cutting a six inch hole. And, okay. and the substrate. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yep. yep. That shows it. You know, it shows that on our installation details as well. So, what about uh, when you have a pipe that falls in the seam of a panel? What does that installation look like? You know, like Adam said, sometimes you can't always lay out the roof or move pipes, so it does happen. You know, obviously it's not ideal. Um, so we do have a detail for that. It's basically the same pipe boot installation Adam just described, but we basically give a we make a flat portion in between the panel seam to where you can put that pipe boot onto a flat surface. Um, you know, we use cleats that go around the sides of the panels and, and the top of the panel hems into it, you know, so again, to create that flat surface to attach it to, because that's, that's the main thing about pipe boots that a lot of people um, miss when it comes to an inseam insulation is that these pipe boots aren't designed to make 90 degree angles. So when you're going up and over a vertical seam, you're going to have substantial gaps and usually they're just filled with caulk. Um, you're not going to get a good seal. The caulk can dry out, you know, and now you have a big hole in your roof and you have gaps in your pipe boots. So it's not, even if it's sealed properly in the beginning or not technically, technically properly, but even if it's sealed in the beginning, that seal might not last over time. So that's why we have a pipe in the seam detail. Um, you know, it uses cleats, everything's, uh, butyl taped off, everything's fastened down to compress the butyl tape to get a good seal, and it creates a flat surface for you to attach your pipe boot to. Um, so again, the butyl tape that's underneath the pipe boot can be compressed all the way around, giving you the longest life out of the installation you possibly can. So we've been talking about pipe boots and standing seam. How does installation differ for like a corrugated exposed fastener system? Depending on the exposed fastener system that you're using, again, if you've got those right angles, um, you know, you might have an issue, but you know, corrugated roofs, you have those soft curves. 
and you can get a flat you can you can manipulate that pipe boot to get flat along that whole surface and that's the idea you know is that you want the pipe boot flat to whatever it is you're attaching it to if uh you know you take and you make a pipe boot and you do a 90 degree angle and you have a gap there then it's technically not going to be installed probably per the manufacturer's recommendations or sheffield's recommendations so you know, the idea is is that you want the base of that pipe boot as flat as possible so you don't have to count on caulking and you know you can attach it properly to the base of the substrate of what it is that you're attaching to right so uh, what are the sizes typically how uh, big and how small do these things get I've seen pipe boots anywhere from a quarter inch wide for a lightning rod protection to 22, 24 inches wide for a solar tube. Um, I, you can get them in pretty much any size penetration you want. Yeah, and we extent. yeah we have we have number nine pipe boots that go up to 19 inch wide penetration. Okay. So I mean they're they're pretty huge, pretty massive. I mean you. You know, certainly as you get bigger and bigger with the with the size of the penetration, that may dictate you going to a curb or or a different type of detail right. to address that. But you know, these are good up to about 19 inches. And, and it's also good to note that pipe boots are made for round penetrations, not square penetrations. Just because a pipe boot can fit around a square penetration, you know, doesn't mean that it's technically designed to go around a square penetration. It's a great point, Jeff. I mean, I, I think that's a pretty popular question we get as well, as far as, well, hey, I, I have this, you know, rectangular penetration. It's only at two by six. You know, how about it? Um, no, you're still not able to use a round pipe boot to, to flash that. Yeah. What's maintenance look like for a pipe boot in your metal roofing system? Uh, I mean, it really depends on where that pipe boot is located, um, whether you're dealing with snow and ice and um, you know, ex you know, extreme temperature changes where you got thawing and melting and freezing it depends on the pipe boots installed correctly, you know, whether, you know, it's holding water and things like that. But, um, you know, under, under our warranties and under most manufacturers warranties, pipe boots are considered a maintenance item. So they are something that should be checked, uh, you know, throughout the life cycle of the roof. If you notice a problem with it, uh, it should be replaced. You know, that's another uh, thing about it is they are easy to replace. They're easy to install and they're easy to replace. Um, you know, and that's why we consider them a maintenance item because will they last 60, 80 years? Probably not. But, you know, for what they do, the ease of install and the longevity that they do provide, um, it's a pretty good option for uh, flashing, you know, when it comes down to the pros and cons of whether to use it or not to use it. What type of problems should someone be looking out for when they're, you know, inspecting their pipe boots? Uh, I think the main one that I'd be looking for is cracking. You know, if there's any deterioration of the EPDM, if there's any way for water to infiltrate it, uh, the pipe boot, you know, if it didn't have a pipe band installed at the top or maybe the pipe band came loose and it's sagging, uh, then it could hold water and debris, things like that. Um, you know, if there is sealant underneath the pipe boot, because anytime you have, you know, if, even if it has a rubber base, you still want some kind of sealant or compression tape underneath it um, just to provide that extra secondary protection. Um, you know, but I mean, all around is just whether or not the pipe boot is in good health and what it looks like. And if it's starting to deteriorate, uh, it's a pretty easy fix and a pretty cheap replacement rather than uh, taking a chance and trying to get you know more life out of something that you know needs to be replaced but i'd say i'd say cracking in the rubber um falling down pipe boot cut incorrectly and being too loose not having a pipe band at the top things like that if you gotta if you have a custom detail and you know that's the way you've been doing that's the way you were taught and it works i mean that's you know more power to you um but when you deal with you know the amount of installation contractors we have across the country that might not have had that craftsman type training um you know this is a this is a sound approach that's you know used all over the place that pretty much anybody can install yeah jeff well that's a great point i'm really glad that we could answer these questions finally and i'm sure we'll have a video talking about how to install pipe boots a little bit more specific and with a little bit more detail but i'm glad we could cover this today thanks adam and jeff comment down below if you have any questions 
Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. We'll catch you next time.